Hi guys, welcome back to RT Shed Tea, where respiratory therapists live out loud. With me, your host, Linda Fry, the asthma lady. Yes, welcome everybody. Welcome to anyone new. And we are in a new month, we're in the month of May, which is Asthma and Awareness Month. It's also the month where we celebrate mothers. So it made sense to me to give like a just a different vibe, usually for Asthma and Awareness Month, um, Asthma and Allergy Awareness Month. I usually do a bunch of content around asthma and allergies specifically, but today's episode, I wanted to go just a little bit on the route of asthma, allergy awareness, and self-care and skin care. So I have an amazing guest co-host who is my esthetician, Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Hello, hello. <laughs> so I'm going to let Deanna introduce herself and we're just going to do our thing. I'm going to let her take over the show. Okay. So yes, Deanna, can you please introduce yourself to the listeners? Yes. So I am Deanna. I am a licensed esthetician and I'm also the owner of Aria Joy Skincare. Mm -hmm. um, I've been licensed about a little over 10 years and my motto is I help you create your skin's best debut. I am also specialized in corrective skincare. Mm -hmm. People yeah. have been complimenting me on the yes, glow. Yes, I was looking at the skin like, <laughs> oh, it's glowy. I'm well, loving it. Well, you know, I got, I got, I got a little makeup on, but when I am bare good. face, bare face, people be like, Linda, you got, a, you got a nice little glow, and I'm like. I have been taking care of the skin. It has been a priority. And that is because of Deanna. She's been working her magic on me. So it's good, good, good. And, and that is really the vibe of today's episode of just that self-care, focus, self-care, skin care, and just like I said, wrapped up with asthma and allergy knowledge as well. Uh, so for those of you guys, once again, I'm the asthma lady. So during this, this month, we usually do asthma and, oh, asthma and allergy, uh, um, education content. And just to give you a little background, um, asthma is a chronic lung disease and it is a chronic lung disease of the airways. So this makes breathing harder because it's about airflow being limited. And so, and this primarily happens, unfortunately, well, it affects all of us in some shape or form because it affects how people go to work, school, and it affects our economy. It's, a, it's an expensive problem because folks go to the emergency room often for something that can be controlled, right? So just to let you know that Asthma is with you for life, but it can be controlled. We have a lot of resources available. And it's unfortunate that there are some communities that carry a bulk of the burden more than others. And uh, those community communities are usually minority communities. And when it comes to um, the specific numbers, when it comes to adults, it affects Black women often. So the high numbers for that demographic. Um, and so today we're going to focus, um, because once again, we have Mother's Day coming up, we want to focus on self-care and skin care. So just doing things intentional. So we are going to loop in Deanna, who is our expert guest co-host here today. And we definitely appreciate you, Deanna. Thank you for your time. So Thank gonna, you yeah. for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Good vibes. Deanna's always good vibes. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get right into this. So what made you decide to be an esthetician? So I used to have extremely bad acne. Um, and somebody invited me to like a pamper party. Now, this is before I decided to like go to school for aesthetics. I just always like, you know, the girly side of doing skincare, makeup combinations, but I never really knew exactly what to put on my skin. So okay. I did like a demo party and it, it might have been like a, a Mary Kay party and somebody did like a full facial on me. 
And I actually became interested in the fact I wanted to touch the skin after uh -huh. having the experience of, of just doing the demo. Um, so my acne journey kind of started that because I didn't know what to use. And I really didn't have the right resources around me. When you go to the pharmacy, they kind of just say, okay, this is skincare aisle, right. you know, uh, you know, pick something. And when they pick something, it's more so for all skin types, but things right. weren't working. Mm. So I was breaking out. Uh, then you go, sometimes you go to other places like medical professionals, depending on how great your dermatologist is. And they might say, mm -hmm. hey, use this cream. But then okay. I still didn't have a full skincare regimen. Like mm -hmm. it just was use the cream. I didn't know what cleansers, what moisturizers. So just wanted more knowledge kind of push me into the realm of doing aesthetics because I wanted to know exactly what would work for skin like mine right. and I wanted to know what would create great results so that was the start of my journey it it, it all started from huh. teen acne on up to trying a, a demo skincare party and just wanting to know more okay so so when did you start like you know doing like going to school and started seeing clients and like, and who are your, your main clients, your demographics? Like, who do you cater to? So I started school, it was 20, I graduated in 2013. I did about, it's like a six month program, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whether you do part-time or full-time. And then what aesthetics is continuing education because there are always spa um, services that are new to the world of aesthetics mm -hmm. so I'm always learning but it's been since about 2013 okay. that I became an esthetician I wish it was earlier than that I, I always tell <laughs> people no but listen <laughs> I always tell <laughs> it was supposed to be earlier than that because oh, I I used to work in corporate America and I wanted to go to school but it's all started from a no I ended up going to school from my old boss some years ago saying, oh, well, you know, we can't give you that time. Mm. And I just took a leap That's of faith. That's it. And I, I went to esthetician school and I never turned back after that. The Lord never works turned back. in mysterious yes. ways. <laughs> yes, he does. Like, so yes, you, he was, does. You, was, you was meant to do this. Because like I said, <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, girl. I you... truly believe it. Go and ahead. now my, yes. Look, my um, my demographic of clients. So it's interesting. When I first started, I didn't see many people that look like you and I in okay. my esthetician chair. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, it was it was more it was more so other nationalities that I would see getting a facial. But once I became solo, I got the clientele that look more like myself. It, it's still mm. diverse. I have a diverse, diverse clientele, okay. but I had to kind of create the ambiance of was more say, people that look like me starting. I was going to say, faces. why do you think you were seeing the, the clientele that you were seeing at the time? Is it because of you think like a access? Was it like, do you think it's just time? Like they could like women, that look like us could not fit it in. Like what? Right. What did you do? So it's, it's interesting because I say it's a couple different things. One, I think people don't really, like they lack knowledge. Like how I told you when I got a little demo facial, I was like, oh, what is this? You know, mm -hmm. because we grew up, you know, grab some lotion, wash your face with that cloth, mm -hmm. put that Vaseline on, get out the house. It Crazy. was like- Can you believe right, Vaseline we were putting on our faces? Listen, I Ball pass out soap. every time a client. <laughs> Ball soap and Vaseline, it's insane. Yes. And, <laughs> like... and so I think one part of that uh, is lack of knowledge. Yeah. And then the other part is a lot of people consider a facial to be something that is solely like for birthdays. A like luxury, just like, yes. Yeah, yes. a luxury. It's, it's not, and I tell people all the time, this is total health care because your mm -hmm. skin is your largest organ yeah so we yes. throw different things on our face and, and you got to keep in mind you have pores and things that absorb all of what you put on your face it's not just something that you do for luxury it should be something that you do every single day and your Great. skin tells the story about your health mm -hmm. so if you're eating the wrong things 
different, you know, situations are going to happen with your skin. You might see breakouts in certain areas. So the skin is not just something that we toy with when we want to have something special, like a spa right. day for our birthday. I love when you first saw me and you were like, listen, you know, I guess skin, you did like a good assessment and everything starts with an assessment, everything you do. Um, yes. And you were like, um, you know, you were like, yeah, you know, your skin is, is okay, but I can tell you don't drink enough water. And I was like, yeah, I, it's, it's a fact. Yes. I don't drink enough water. And then you were like, listen, I can see it in your face. And I was like, yeah. So I know the skin, the, it, it tells stories. It do. And no matter Absolutely. Um, what type of skin, it definitely tells a story. Right. So I love that. So, okay. okay. So we're good. We on a good track. So so as an esthetician, what are your top recommendations for gentle skincare routines and products like Sudafool for someone with sensitive skin, like, you know, allergies, um, you know, eczema, anything like that? Um, is there anything particular we should be looking for as far as ingredients, formula, formation, uh, formulations in the product? So I'll say for like... Um sensitive, uh, even clients that have rosacea, eczema, everybody in the world of skincare should have what we call a primary cleanser. So that's a cleanser that you use every single day to start your routine. Now, the primary mm -hmm. cleanser is normally a cleanser um, that is mild. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes, depending on how sensitive your skin is, you don't really feel an extreme sensation from it because mm -hmm. it's not considered to be like a treatment cleanser where you're attacking like acne or something specific on, okay. on the skin. So the, the um, basic so you would just percent. use like right. Okay. So it's just going to be your your everyday cleanser that's going to remove dirt debris from the environment off of the face and it's going to help with what we call your cell turnover and that's just basically mm -hmm. when we get new skin every 28 days depending on our age okay. um because i always tell clients if if you're if you're getting close to the menopausal period then every 40 days is when skin begins to renew and oh, they kind of okay. stay drier yeah they stay drier longer so you want to make sure that you're getting that dead skin off the face and you have a oh. good cleanser that's designed to help you with, with new um, skin turnover. Okay. But to pinpoint, yeah. Okay. <laughs> to pinpoint like I ingredients. I need to look out because I'm I like, always, I got some time before yeah. the pause, but yeah, right? <laughs> look, look. Listen, me and you both, but I look sometimes <laughs> the body is so so interesting. Right, okay? right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm like, let me write them <laughs> tips down. I'm like, man, that pause. Yes. Do more. <laughs> yes. So, uh -huh, go ahead. Right. Go so ahead. take Don't care of that you. skin before you get to that period. Uh -huh. But um, some key and some key things to look at when you pick up like a cleanser from the store, you want to make sure, or from your esthetician, you want to make sure you look at like the first five ingredients. And most of the time, uh -huh. it's going to be like water. Water. Um, mm -hmm. something. Right. That's going to be. It's going to be like the number one thing on the back of the that packaging. Should be, it should be water. First, right. Right. Okay. Right. Normally you'll see water start, uh -huh. start the ingredient list. And then if you have, if you have really sensitive skin or eczema, you want something that's calming. So having like an aloe, uh -huh. um, sometimes colloidal oatmeal may be in some of those uh, products that are good for sensitive skin. You uh -huh. want things that are common to the skin, not alcohols. So you want to mm -hmm. look out and be aware of that. If yes. you're already um, if your barrier is already extremely irritated or sensitive. Yeah. Um, but those are like some of my top two. Okay. Okay. Good. Cause I was like, back in the day, I used to use witch hazel and to like help, I think it was a toner or something like that. And it had, it okay. used to dry up my skin. I didn't notice it was dry cause it had alcohol in it. I think. Yeah. And witch hazel yeah. is an astringent. Okay, it's an astringent. See. A lot of people try to use it like a toner, and I see? tell them, you know, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah. See, so that and that's from back in the day stuff because I was told, you know, the the bar, you know, bar soap, uh, uh, yeah, the Vaseline and and the witch hazel back in the day that was like a a thing. So yeah, and it can be very grimy, right, right, ashy. I was very <laughs> ashy. No yeah, I don't do that and then right, and then I had to yeah. throw on the um the um the the what vaseline right on top of that to make yep. it See? make it greasy 
<laughs> yes, terrible. Give it, give it you your 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 glow, but the the one oh, that might cause the pores, unfortunately. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yo, the the things. Oh my gosh! The things we used to do. I can't. But no, no, no. Yeah. This is this is good. Okay, so good. So we need to look out for water. Um, water in in yes. the products, and then the second one you said was you said the second one to look. Oh, for. water. Um, aloe is really great okay, for yes. sensitized skin. Um, go. like any colloidal oatmeal. I find uh -huh. that oatmeals are normally in a lot of like products for our eczema based clients. Yes, yes. That's a really you want calming um, you know. ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you I want was... like something very calming to the skin. Mm hmm. I was using that because the baby. Uh. Uh, Logan, yeah, his skin is a little, you know, and we're not surprised because Chris has eczema. My husband, I have eczema as well. So um, we're not surprised. So Logan's skin is, is starting to give us that vibe. Um, Sometimes uh -oh. he's a little itchy and uh, it's, it's just, it just looks different. He looks patchy in certain places. So yeah, we have to yes. like use um, uh, Alvin, uh, Alvino uh with the oatmeal so that that helps him a lot so that's what we because you know i'm scared to he's still young to me so i'm scared to put like right anything you know so yeah of uh, you know okay that's a good one with and oatmeal. i always tell my clients if it's extremely hard to read you might want to step away from it like even okay. though some ingredients have large some products have large mm -hmm. names and when you look it up it might be something as simple as it may just be another name for coconut oil or something mm -hmm. like that but if you're having trouble with those first five ingredients, it may not necessarily be, be the product for you. for you, or you might want to get the advice from somebody who may know a little bit more detail about the ingredients in the product to just make sure it is designed for your skin, which is why when you pick out a cleanser, that's whether you have sensitive, mm -hmm. acne, eczema, make sure it's for your skin type, because mm -hmm. that's another problem. A lot of people think they have sensitive skin and they really have just stripped their skincare barrier by using a bunch of different products that weren't for them. Okay. And now it's just stressed out. So as soon as they stressed put products on, it's like skin. it burns, it mm. itches, it's irritated. It it just may be that they have to get their skin back in balance. Okay. That, that's a, that's yes. a good tip. Okay. So just having stressful skin. Because I wanted to talk about this in the form of um, self-care and just... Um, yes. dealing with stress. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, stress can trigger asthma. So that's another thing. And it also, you can see the wow. stress on the skin. So people don't, you know, so these things like anxiety, um, all this stuff can trigger asthma. So just um, focusing on making self-care a priority as well as skincare, like skincare being a good habit. Uh, a good yes. uh, skincare routine um, uh, to have that as a good habit under the self-care plan. Because for me, there's a great, um, especially as a, as a mom now, like Logan just turned three, but I still oh. struggle. I thank you. I know he's, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I still struggle with my own self-care because of course, as a mom, we, we put everybody before us. First. So yep. yeah. So, you know, this, just, just, um, you know, trying to have it all together, going outside. And then when it's time to take care of ourselves, you know, like that good, uh, routine, um, sometimes we, we just forfeit. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, I don't need it. Right. So, yeah. So, so how do you, so how do you coach people through that, that say things like that to you? Like, oh, oh yeah, I'm, it's my birthday. So I, 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 came for a facial so what what tip what do you tell them to kind of get them on board with doing it all the time yes <laughs> so normally what happens is once I go over there's what I call the skin map which is where I show them like a a picture of what their uh, of a face and it shows everything going on in the different sections of the face mm -hmm. I start to give recommendations of first of all, telling them what's going on with the skin, but recommendations of what I recommend going forward. And then regardless of whether they kind of listen to that information, I always tell people when you do your skincare, you need to put yourself on the calendar, meaning 
if you have pencil it in. Yeah, you gotta put just like you put everything uh, else on the calendar. You gotta put just right. your routine on the calendar. I even have a I had to do it for myself because as much as I touch everyone else's skin mm -hmm. and I have the products on my shelf. I have to remember, especially my treatment days when I'm mm -hmm. doing my nighttime skincare, which is what I consider my mm -hmm. self-care days. Yes. Um, the nighttime. That's, that's where I do. Yes. Every, yes. that's when I do every step two to three times a week for like those things that I'm working on, like pigmentation or anything mm -hmm. like that. If I'm breaking out, um, but I tell them, put it on a calendar so that something reminds you, Hey, Every day, every Sunday mm -hmm. at nine o'clock for me is Sundays at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. I do my full routine. Yes. Tuesdays at whatever time, do your full routine. Even though you still mm -hmm. are going to do your morning routine, that nighttime routine is important because that's when you're taking the most time with your skincare regimen and you're taking mm -hmm. time with yourself. For yourself. Yes, so, yes, right. Yes. Let me tell I'll you, and, and skincare is relaxing. Okay, it's it's therapeutic to me to just yes. take that time, put my little headband on, yes. and put my take products your on. Time yes. and leave me no alone, rush. everybody. Close yep. the door. Uh -huh. put babies in bed, hubby's watching whatever yes. you want on TV. I need my time. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely. I, I've been the end. I've been bad. I've been forfeiting my days. I gotta. I gotta. Uh oh, jump back on you gotta them. put yeah. you back on the calendar. Work. Work has been like I said, baby. You know he has a whole new routine. So I've been very, you know, busy with you know being the mommy, and I'm. Yeah, you know man. So I gotta take my own advice. Yes. <laughs> I will go. <laughs> this. I, I'm. I'm glad I'm seeing you today. This is gonna remind yes. me to do it. Okay. So with that being said, okay. So. For healthcare professionals, oh, this is good. And this, this includes me, uh, who wear long lasting makeup. This was a struggle uh -oh. during demanding shifts. So those 12 hour shifts. So what are some quick, effective skincare tips that can be implemented to refresh and care for the skin? Um, especially considering, uh, um, us wearing, we wear like a lot of us wear a mask. Uh, mask for a long time. So you got makeup on and the mask for a long period of time. So I would say if you are a person who um, frequents makeup, I always tell people nothing is wrong with makeup as long as you know how to properly remove it. Mm -hmm. Because and we're, I did we're it. the breakout. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, I didn't. Listen, Until I met you. Those... Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> where, those, where those breakouts happen is where... You have the people who take, like, for example, I have clients that say, hey, yeah, I just removed the product with a makeup wipe and then I go to sleep. You can't yes. do that. Like after, yeah. after a 12 hour shift, right? Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you have uh, a proper makeup removal system. Um, like for me, like one of one pro product that I use for makeup removal now I'm no makeup artist. I, I do do makeup, but I haven't done makeup in a long while. But yeah. uh, with with makeup removal, I use a product called Abilene, right? And okay. Abilene is is actually, they consider it a cleanser, but I wouldn't cleanse my skin with it, like okay. as a cleanser and then put a moisturizer on. But I use it because it's, it's like an oil base and it picks up, it easily picks up um, mm. hard to remove makeup, especially, okay. you know, how you have those red lipsticks that kind of mm -hmm. stain the lip mm -hmm. or you have um, mascara that be, might be hard to remove. Right. Waterproof. You need a, right. You mm -hmm. need a great makeup removal remover and make sure that your cleanser is designed to remove makeup as well. And sometimes it's listed on the packaging. Okay. It may say, um, it's a cleanser that is great for also removing makeup because if you're not cleansing properly with a great cleanser, when you and you don't do what we call a double cleanse, that's when you mm -hmm. cleanse your face twice. Twice. Then you might be leaving some of that makeup behind. Yes. Right. And makeup removal wipes, like for example, um, I used to take like a show people putting makeup on an orange, right? You know how oranges have all those grooves, mm -hmm. and if you take mm -hmm. an orange and you have makeup on one and you remove the remove the makeup with a makeup wipe that orange is still going to have makeup, makeup all in the groups mm. right okay. but if you take an orange and you take your makeup remover and then you go in with a cleanser the other orange is going to be much cleaner than the one okay. that you just used a makeup wipe because makeup wipes is just like to take off some of the makeup but you still have to go back in to pick it up to pick up mm. anything that's stuck within your pores in the grooves mm -hmm. of the skin, 
So you have to have a full routine. So if you are wearing makeup, I would say um, during a 12 hour shift, have a mm -hmm. makeup removal system, have a great primary cleanser. You want to double cleanse whenever you're using makeup, um, whenever you have makeup on, excuse me, mm -hmm. you want to do a double cleanse. Okay. I always do a double cleanse even without it, but okay. make sure you do a double cleanse and then you'll go in with your regular routine, whether that's a moisturizer or your night creams or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. If you are somebody who's at work and you want to make sure when you break out a lot, right. And you want to make sure you kind of like touch up the face throughout the day and you don't mind removing your makeup it's always good to have like a little sample kit in your purse mm, and maybe on lunch okay. you can you can do like a, a mini routine, right. especially in between wearing a mask because mm -hmm. mask knee is can get really ugly if you wear a mask all the time right. and you don't have a good skincare routine. A lot of right. people end up with um, extreme cheek acne, pustules mm -hmm. in places that you don't want it on a Correct. lower section of the face. So yeah. um, having those little kits and you can make yourself a kit. If you have right. big bottles of product, just take the little travel size one ounce jars and fill it with some skincare on the go. Um, okay. And it's the same for my people that that work out and do things like that. You have to take off. And when you're sweating, you have to make sure you clean that up. Because okay. when you sweat and, and you're we wearing a mask. definitely sweating under yeah. those masks. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I I don't wear full face makeup going to work yeah. because I just don't have the patience to do it. And you wow, gotta have time. For uh, you, right. <laughs> and and I guess to work on time. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Right, so right. I don't, no shade to the to the women that wear full face uh, makeup uh, to, right. to the hospital or anything like that. They look beautiful, gorgeous. Um, but you know, we gotta throw those masks on, and then, like you said, yeah, you're sweating underneath that. Um, and then yeah, you right. get you get the breakout. So I just don't I don't bother with with the makeup. But those are great tips because those white the white packs don't tell you to cleanse right. after using the wipes because you think you wipe your face one and done, and then I would go to sleep and I would see the stuff still on my pillow, still see it on the pillow. Right. Like, oh, and look, I still the makeup. pillow is a whole nother monster. Okay, because you, you have dead skin cells sitting come on. there. Asthma sweat. World Central. We know we yeah. are that is yeah. a is a is a trigger. So they have to put the pillow encasement. That's a good one. So this is yeah. asthma and allergy awareness, folks. So please remember to use a pillow encasements and encase your mattress. Okay, so all of that. So yes. they all contribute. So the pillows, um, pillow encasements, you know, or if you sleep on pillows, uh, you know, the casing come on, whatever, all that can contribute to sk your skin just breaking out and whatnot. So yes, that's another good tip. I forgot about that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, yeah. Deanna. Oh, we we are <laughs> good. We are doing so good. So yes. I mean, so yeah. So this is the time where. Okay, so this is the time where um you get to plug away. Plug. What what do you got going okay. on? We got like a few <laughs> minutes. So where can we find you? Yes. So you can find me on um on Instagram. My name is Deanna of AJ Skincare, because that would be too many words to write if I put Aria Joy. But Deanna of AJ Skincare, I am there on Instagram. Um, I am also on TikTok under uh i believe it is the same name deanna of aj skincare facebook you can find me at aria joy skincare so whatever platform you're on okay. i am there look i gotta get on linkedin because you made me think uh, about that uh, i yeah. definitely have to get up there um don't but you can find me there. You there anyway <laughs> yes. whether you're there or not i'm mentioning your name <laughs> and so I'm, i'll put your stuff in the description as well too Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can you can find me in on any of those platforms. Um, it was something else I was going to say. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh oh, it in in the spirit of Mother's Day, okay. Want to come in for a service? You can uh reach me at www.ariajoyskincare.as.me mm -hmm. uh to grab your Mother's Day gift cards or if you want to bring mom in for a service no, or no. perhaps you just have questions about your skin. You could also do a virtual call um which is almost similar to how we're on this Zoom and we can talk mm -hmm. about your skin before you come in for a service. Yes. Love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Works. We're miracles people oh my yes. goodness 
<laughs> so yes well Deanna thank you so much for being here with thank us thank you for having me sharing these amazing tips and just giving us that good vibe and just giving us the knowledge that we need about self-care skin care and addressing those things like we said about with 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 asthma and allergies those pillows taking care of those things um we appreciate you so thank you thank you thank you and Same here i appreciate you yes 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 yes, yes. okay see yes. Uh, i'm not good at that yet but uh, i can't uh, 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 I might be, oh, okay. So we might, we might be collabing on, on some, another thing. So yes. I might be on your platform, which would be cool. So looking forward to that. And, um, I will be seeing you soon for the, for, you know, for the routines. So, yes, I am super soon. excited and I thank you for having <laughs> me. This was super amazing. And listen, it's right up my alley because I am an asthmatic. So I have so many oh. more questions for you. I okay. can't wait. Listen. I can't wait to connect. All right. All right. Yes. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us. Remember that we are on most podcast platforms on Wednesdays and we are on YouTube on Thursdays. So look out. We're going to be doing a bunch of stuff for Asthma and Allergy Awareness Month. I will be in Washington, D.C. with the Ooh. Allergy and Asthma Network. Um, so we're doing advocacy day in DC in the in the Capitol Hill. So we'll be doing that, and I will also be traveling in Texas. I will have more information on that. So yes, got many many more things to come. And remember, we are growing together. So I will see you guys next week. And remember to invest in yourself and to only compete with your situation. You see you guys next week. Bye guys. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.